The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is, like you said, the new memorial of Mary, the mother of the church, which Pope Francis instituted a few years ago. Uh, this morning, I was getting into my Monday morning routine, having a great opportunity up early, come over here to pray and getting set up for Mass, and I uh, realized we needed to set up for the feast day, and I searched the lectionary, and there were not the readings for the day. Uh, I searched the Roman Missal, there were no none of the prayers for the day, and so I had a little bit of a panic, but fortunately, uh, I did have this Magnificat here, so uh, from now on... Uh, a good practice for you on Pentecost Sunday would be to warn your priest, don't forget, tomorrow is the Feast of Mary, Mother of the Church. Make sure you're ready for it. That definitely caught me off guard this morning. When we say that Mary is Mother of the Church, uh, we mean that in two different ways. Uh, first of all, uh, we mean that Mary is a new Eve. So just as the original Eve became the mother of all sinners, so likewise, Mary becomes the mother of all those who have been redeemed. Because she is the mother of God, the mother of Christ, therefore she is also mother of the body of Christ. So the church has always taught that when Christians are reborn in baptism, as they're reborn into Christ, so likewise they are reborn from the womb of Mary in a spiritual sense. Because Mary is the new Eve, the mother of all those who have been redeemed, that's part of the reason why Jesus never calls her mom in the Gospels. He always refers to her as woman, uh, because woman was originally the name of Eve before she sinned. All right? So Mary is the, the new Eve, the mother of all those who have been redeemed, all those who have been reborn into Christ uh, through baptism. There's another reason why we can call Mary mother of the church, and I've spoken about this a little bit before. Uh, when I was at Our Lady Grace in Noblesville, we had a daily chapel uh, dedicated to Mary. And one of the things we did in there was we, we pointed out the different foreshadowings of Mary in the Old Testament. And I think one of the most striking foreshadowings of Mary is someone who's actually not thought about very often. But in our chapel, we put an icon up of Rachel. Rachel from the Old Testament, whose husband was who? Rachel was born, or Rachel was wedded to the man named Jacob, right? Jacob, whose name was later changed to Israel after he fought with the angel of God. Uh, Israel literally means uh, he who wrestles with God, right? So Jacob's name became Israel, and he had 12 sons, the 12 children of Israel, or the 12 tribes of of Israel, right? Now, so think about this. When we say that Mary is the mother of the church, it's like saying that Mary is the mother of the new Israel, the church which is the new Israel, and that's why there were 12 apostles, just like there were 12 tribes of Israel. So who was the mother, or who was the matriarch of all those tribes of Israel? 
It was Rachel. Now, another thing we can point out about this, and this is talked about by one of my favorite scripture scholars. His name is Brant Petrie. He points out that Jesus, many scripture scholars discuss that Jesus was very similar to Joseph, who was the first son of Rachel in the Old Testament. Like Joseph, Jesus is betrayed, right, for 30 shekels of silver. Like Joseph, who was sold by his brothers and was pretended to have been dead and yet returned to his father later on in the story, it's like an image of the resurrection, right? Same thing happened with Jesus, except for he literally did die and come back from the dead. There's all sorts of different similarities you can point out. But what no, what no scripture scholar points out is if Jesus is a new Joseph, then wouldn't it make sense that Jesus' mother is like Joseph's mother? Rachel, right? Even in modern Judaism, one of the most common things that Jews will do in the Holy Land, one of the most common places they'll make pilgrimages to, is the tomb of Rachel. Because all of the people of Israel, all of the descendants of Israel, namely ethnic Jews today, they consider themselves descendants of Rachel. And not only do they go and pay her honor, but they actually ask for her intercession as well, because they see her as their mother. That's why when the holy innocents, when they were martyred by King Herod, it says that there were cries heard in Bethlehem, Rachel weeping for her children. Right? Rachel had been dead for centuries, but apparently, according to the scriptures, she was still aware of her descendants, and she was weeping on their behalf. Right? Rachel is one of the most striking instances in the Old Testament of a foreshadowing of what we see Mary to be as our mother, the mother of the new Israel, the mother of the church, the mother of us all, 